Assalamu alaikum comrades. It's International Women's Day today, but any day is a good day to read about women in the Soviet Union. And so I have a reading list for you. So first, I want to start off with Woman in Soviet Russia by Jessica Smith. This book was published in 1928. Now, Jessica Smith is really interesting. She became the editor for Soviet Russia Today magazine, one of my favorites as I've talked about it very often. Um, but yes, she's an American who lived in the Soviet Union for quite some time. She first went to the Soviet Union very early on through humanitarian work with the Quakers, uh, just as Anna Louise Strong did, actually. Um, she got more invested in farm work in the Soviet Union and helping get farm equipment to Soviet farmers, uh, among many other things. Um, this is a great book about the life and achievements of women in the Soviet Union at this time. Jessica Smith was also a suffragette and involved in the early activism for birth control in the United States. So her perspective on those things really shines through in this book uh, and it's it's fantastic. I highly recommend it. Also, it's published by um, the Vanguard Vanguard Press and I just I love like their little art and symbols in here. But yes, first recommendation. The second book I've talked about in my last video, I used it as a reference. It's Equality of Women in the USSR from 1956. Now, this is from a conference. It's all the materials and discussion and questions and answers from an international seminar on female equality in Moscow. And yeah, literally, again, it's for the time period. It's for the 1950s. Um, but every single tough question or topic that you'd want to know about women in the Soviet Union, they basically tackle because their audience is women from all over the world with those tough questions to ask ready at hand. And there's lots of great statistics. Uh, and yeah, again, just especially in these two books, the very overt contrast of life for women, at least what they're trying to achieve and what they have achieved politically and at least written down in legislation, in law, um, it's just way ahead of its time. And they're also all very realistic about the realities of, is this the actuality? Are there still men with misogynistic uh, tendencies and ways of thinking, of course, but they're taking the first steps and they're achieving a lot more than other places at the time. Next, I have two books by Lynn Atwood about the concept of the new Soviet man and woman. So the first book is The New Soviet Man and Woman, uh, Sex Role Socialization in the USSR. This is from 1990. And the second book is Creating the New Soviet Woman, uh, Women's Magazines as Engineers of Female Identity, 1922 to 53. I've referenced this book a lot in videos I did on TikTok. Um, there's really cool information about the constant changes of what the new Soviet woman would look like, what she wore, what she did, how she talked. Uh, there's a lot of experimentation going on and the w and through literacy programs and women learning to read and be involved actively in politics that really shaped how that image uh, would be. And so I really love reading about all of these trials and errors as well uh, of what they wanted the new Soviet woman to be, what that would encompass, and what other women at the time thought of that. It was like an active discussion through um, publications and journals and magazines. So it, it, these are both really, really cool books. Oh, this one's from 1999, the second one. I, I really enjoy Lynn Atwood's work and the different anecdotes and stories um, about it. It's all very realistic. There's lots of positive and negative, but I just find it a really fascinating insight into uh, the building of something so completely new. Remember, this is a whole new society, a whole new way of governing, a whole new way of life. Um, you know, many like from, you know, Lenin, Colin Ty, they all completely disagreed with each other all the time and argued all the time and had and changed their views all the time uh, about what life would be like. What's the ideal family life? What's the ideal woman? Like, what would that look like? Would it be androgynous? Would they be more masculine? Would they not wear makeup like the toxic woman, bourgeois woman in the West who have to pretend they don't look sickly by adding makeup to their face? Or would the Soviet woman want to present more feminine like the Western woman? It, this is all constant discussion and it's just so interesting 
to read about and there are d many different perspectives and it just it's a constant changing thing which is why it's so frustrating when people try to discuss the Soviet Union as if it was always one way all the time only and of course with history we know for as many people involved there are that many realities and stories and truths um, but even more so those truths and stories change so much like every year every month every day things are changing and especially in the new so socialist state they were trying things out for the very first time next we have american girls in red russia chasing the soviet dream again another book i'm sure i've talked about i just find the stories of american women who chose to travel to the soviet union and many live and stay there it's so interesting. Again, lots of early feminists, some suffragettes, entertainers, workers, you had so many women going for various different reasons. The, this book even mentions some even choosing to divorce their husbands to do so. Uh, it's very interesting. Many had positive experiences. A lot had negative experiences. Um, yeah, it's a reality. <laughs> Nothing's perfect. But uh, I just find these stories really interesting. And for Westerners, I know a lot of most of you who watch me are from the West who want to, you know, put themselves in these people's shoes. Because I know a lot of you talk about, oh, I wish I was alive then. I wish I experienced that. There's so many stories of people who did experience that. Um, and, and seeing it through their eyes is really valuable for us trying to understand the past and how they saw it. Um, and also to give our fantasies some nuance right because there's a lot of harsh realities good and bad uh, that you need to also understand through the experiences of others and I, I highly recommend this book to get that sort of perspective I forgot to mention this book is by Julia L Mickenberg I remember the first time I read this book I was really frustrated because she did not paint Anna Louise strong in a great light um, she had a, she had a tough personality I mean she was essentially a Victorian woman she was born in the Victorian era um, doing a lot of firsts for a woman and having to have a certain kind of personality to do so and a lot of she rubbed a lot of people the wrong way yeah, I always get I'm very defensive so I'm I first I hated this author I'm like how dare you paint Anna Louise in this light um, but it's still valuable information speaking of Anna Louise my last uh, book recommendation is right in her soul the life of Anna Louise Strong by Tracy B Strong he was her last surviving relative but unfortunately he passed away uh, last spring or early summer <laughs> Uh, it was, which is, I cried when I found out because I was wanting to talk to him so badly. I was putting off emailing him and, and setting up a time to talk to him. And then by the time I got the courage, I found out that he had just died. And so it was really hard for me. Um, but yeah, and his wife, Helen Kesar. So it's a really fantastic book. It goes through her entire life, which is incredibly inspirational to me personally. Um, and there's just, for me, there's so many similarities between me and her and the way that she thought and the way that she felt and her life and her way of seeing things. And it's just, it's such a personal book to me. And I think almost everyone could get something out of this book with the life of Anna Louise Strong. Um, you know, she was the longest living American in Moscow for some time. She lived there cons like pretty consistently for like 20 years. Uh, and so there's lots of experiences to read about and her family was super super literate and, and wrote letters to each other all the time and so there's so much that we can know about her personally and her life because of the constant writing of letters which are all accessible um, in the Anna Louise Strong archives which is at the University of Washington uh, so there, there's plenty to learn plenty to read about and I just think anyone, everyone should read this book and learn about this amazing woman and her life and, and what she did, you know, in Seattle, what she did in the Soviet Union, in, in Spain, in the DPRK, in, in China. She, she went everywhere and did so many things and saw so many things and her struggles are just fascinating to me. So the first book that I recommended was by Jessica Smith and I told you that she was the editor of Soviet Russia Today magazine. I have a special edition to share with you. This is Soviet Russia Today, March 1945. It's a special edition about women in war. And I'm not going to open it because this is my magazine, probably in the most fragile state. I don't know what happened to it over the years, um, but it's very, very brittle. But I have scanned this and put this on ladiesthehar.com for free to look at and download. And I highly recommend it. I think especially during women's Women's Day, a lot of people like to talk about 
woman in war, the woman in World War II, Soviet woman, although I have my <laughs> reservations because people tend to really like sexualize and fetishize them. Um, but of course they are very important and fascinating to learn about. But I try to mention women at war a little bit less and highlight other women and factors just because it's not only is it overdone, it's just talked about in questionable ways sometimes. But there's just such valuable insights and photographs through this magazine um, and it's on my website. And also on my website, every single pamphlet and piece of writing from my personal collection that I've scanned so far um, under the hashtag woman, I highly recommend you check out. Uh, there are so many pamphlets created to try and talk about, discuss, and educate on the stance of women in the Soviet Union. Most of my pamphlets are from the 1920s to the 50s, which is uh, the time frame where most of these were made, because after that, attempts to bring understanding and a desire to be associated with the Soviet Union started to plummet, unfortunately, and people weren't listening. A lot of these pamphlets never hit the intended audience. They mostly were read and bought by people who were already sympathetic, unfortunately, and then largely forgotten about over time. But I have this passion and drive to collect, preserve, and put them out for you for free. So please check out these pamphlets. Uh, there's a lot of really, really cool ones and it'll all be linked down below. Those are my recommendations today on International Women's Day. Though it doesn't matter which day you come across this video or read these things, every day is a good day to learn about women in the Soviet Union and women who traveled to the Soviet Union and fantastic female socialists and communists out there. Have you read any of these books that I've suggested? If you have, please tell me what you think down below. And if you go on to buy one of these books, read one of my PDFs, or however you acquire the material, please let me know what you think about it. There's so much to learn and understand, and I hope you're as excited to learn about it as I am. All right, thank you for watching and have a great day. Be inspired by all of this history.